Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having a great week. I told you we'd be back before you knew it. Here we are Wednesday for Wicked Watts Wednesdays. And we are going to continue with the case files. I hope you guys first, Pug Mama. You are so first, girl. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got both my devices open and I got a jump start on it because the, uh, there was two downloads that I wanted to do before opening. So last we, we left off with Troy McCoy and discussions on the book and, and whatnot. And hang on, let me catch up my other device here. But please tell me how y'all are doing. I've missed you. It's been a long three days. We are going to go over the few pictures that were in S73-9 uh, and then S73-10. That one's got a lot of the um, conversations that we've discussed and some of which might be new to you guys. So, I mean, these are all of the documented... Hi, Joe. These are all the documented... Um, informations that they put down as that were crucial for this you know this case and, and what was happening so this was the sheet that was found with Shanann Watts when she was buried in the clandestine grave um, some of you may have seen these some of you may not <clears throat> Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so there's just a few to go through in this one, and then we can get into the, the texts and the conversations that were happening between Shanann and, and her loved ones. You can see quite how far... You remember Chris Watts' uh, the descriptions of how much he... He was active. There was uh, the, the heart measure or whatever, the steps measure, I guess you could say, um, on his phone that had showed the activity of him on that day. You have not seen this? Well, that's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome you haven't seen it yet, but it's awesome that it's new for someone. It It's not all going to be new for everyone, but this is how things were found when the detectives made it out there. Salut, ma belle Yvette. <laughs> T'es tellement fin. And if you guys remember, Nicole Atkinson had mentioned to the authorities that, you know, it was odd that the sheet was so, you know, the sheets on the bed and stuff were not done up correctly. That's not how Shanann kept her home regularly, so it was odd to Nicole Atkinson that that had happened, right? <clears throat> Anybody else see what looks like, you know, face marks and body and stuff in this sheet? It sure looks like it to me. Just a couple more of these evidentiary photos that they took at the survey site after Chris Watts's confession as to where he had uh, basically thrown away his family, right? Absolutely heartbreaking that he could do something like this to the people that he say, you know, he said that he loved so much. These, of course, were the traps that uh, Christopher Watts put, you know, Bella and Celeste into, right? Literally heartbreaking. 
one last photo in this one. We can do a quick recap for those of you that are, are just joining. And if you enjoy hanging out and discussing this Wicked Watts, you know, smash that like button. I appreciate the support. It's a wicked way to show that you care. <laughs> no pun intended. Recap of what we just saw. What do you suppose these markings are on the sheet, folks? Chris Watts has not repented if Watts was, has he would not be doing what he is now. Uh, I definitely think that you have to pay for your actions if you're going to, you know, annihilate people off the face of the earth, right? Which is definitely where he's at right now. Whatever else he's got going on spiritually is entirely up to him and his deal alone kind of thing. Okay, done with that one. We're going to jump into this one. Which I do have open here. He's still the same since being arrested. I wouldn't doubt it, YouTube monitor. I really wouldn't doubt it. <clears throat> so this was Shanann Watts' conversation with her friends, her loved ones, right? which this was obviously with Addy. I totally agree with you, YouTube monitors. That's why there's so many different variations of this story coming out now. I don't know if he is, you know, thriving, no pun intended, on this whole situation and that he's you know criminal famous or some shit like i don't know but uh <laughs> it's pretty obvious that there's just way too many variations to this it's hard to decipher what's actually true and what isn't could we just give the man a freaking lie detector test again like geez but I mean, like the, you know, Tammy told him in the, in the interview after that was finished, you know, you aren't a very good, good liar kind of basically he lied through his teeth throughout everything in that lie detector. I totally believe he's still playing games. I wonder if any of these people are paying to talk to him or giving him benefits even if it's just canteen benefits or something, you know?
we all know how well the relationship is with the in-laws. So this is just another problem that she seems to be talking about here. <coughs> you feel he murdered before? She used to listen to Watts kept asking for forgiveness. Why why what he what has Watts done near his home or in North Carolina? Very, very, very good question. Definitely um brings speculation about his character when he's capable of doing something like this to the people closest to him. Was there any practice in the beginning? Was there something else that happened? And now you're stating that, you know, I mean, who knows? Someone else could have lost their life and it's an unsolved case. Have we, we haven't actually uh, looked into that, right? So. Talk about some of the business here with her friend. Very contradictory, right? Chris is the one that wanted to have a third baby and she got pregnant so fast he didn't expect that that was going to happen, right? And then tried to backtrack. We all know why he was distant and not affectionate towards her. Now, I guess the, the Watts family is saying they were scared of Shanann. You're right about that, uh, YouTube monitors. He sure doesn't have any remorse about killing his own flesh and blood. It sure doesn't appear as though he has very much remorse. I mean, there was a little bit of a choke up part in his interview, in the second prison interview, but he also ended the conversation in a sense too, though, at that time. So There's the proof about the vomiting, right? We don't know if Chris Watts was maybe drugging Shanann. There's been all kinds of talk about that, right? This case was far too rushed YouTube monitors. And now because of that, all of these conspiracies and other random thoughts are hitting the table because first of all, we couldn't get all the information, you know, and second of all, well, he lied about a lot of things, too.
It was it was open and shut so darn quick that the investigation completely halted. They just stopped doing forensic testing. They they completely closed the case, which is quite odd considering that four people were murdered. So no to the counseling, right? And then he's totally <laughs> love Addie's uh, strong determination. Go through his phone and make sure there isn't some other bitch. Out okay, carrying right along here. I don't know what the fuck happened to the technology, but I was just into some discussions with my provider and I don't know if maybe they switched something over uh, during the time that we hung up and, and now, but who knows? So, <clears throat> all right, carrying right along, <laughs> jeez whiz, not going to let it get me down though. Too many people hating lately that uh, they ain't going to win. I'm going to win. So, <clears throat> so as I had stated about the counseling, you know, he didn't want to sit on the couch and talk to some stranger about anything. And that is why, uh, you know, they never ended up actually going to counseling. So... <clears throat> Okay. Yes, I am back because like I said, I'm not going to let the haters win. They can try, but they ain't going to win. I'm going to win. <clears throat> My trust is uh, issues are severe though. People who are trying to get close to me, I'm not sure if I even want to because how do I know I can even trust anybody anymore? That is a real thing. <clears throat> and although, you know, Shanann didn't think he had it in him to be with another woman, little did she know just how much he was capable of, never mind just being with another woman, right? <clears throat> Hi, Billy. How are you?
instead of it being his mother, it ended up being his lover. Aren't we all getting closer to death each day, right, Billy? I think that's what age is supposed to do. That's interesting that Shanann had thoughts to tape her conversations with her mother-in-law due to probably her mother-in-law twisting things around and making it seem like it was all Shanann's fucking fault, whatever the hell was going on, not wanting to look herself in the mirror and decide maybe she might have some fucking, you know, wrong in the situation. It takes two to tango. <clears throat> yeah, you got that right, Joe. Can divorce on his schedule. Hi, David. I am trying to be more self-aware and not swear as much. That's a personal goal. All good, Billy. All good. Sometimes we need somebody to remind us, right?
<laughs> You're funny, David. <clears throat> Chris Watts is an asshat, and I fell in love with the girls after doing research hearing him on national television news stations begging for his wife and children to come home. It prompted me to go over to my freaking computer and check who the heck this was. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a sheer fat like that was a sheer clue that he was lying, right? Some of my friends stop by to keep me company. Yeah, he definitely couldn't look anybody in the face when he was at the hearing.
two o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. He's talking to his coworker. Apparently for CeCe's needs, supposedly, they had a whole bunch of medications stored in the basement for her because she needed it twice a day. So I guess they had to have extras on hand. I don't know. <clears throat> They bombarded me all at once. I want to get everything out there. <sighs> what the heck is he talking about? Everything out there, really. Good morning, America, contacting Jamie. I suppose there could be any number of answers to that question, though, Yvette.
News crews are doing live updates on the corner of the street. Anything new? I'm talking with the FBI now, right now. What does that mean? New developments just got done with the FBI. So 9.30 at night, and then by 2 o'clock in the morning, he was done with the FBI. <clears throat> Praying they can make some good progress is the notes. But the, while the conversation was referring to CC's medication, so I'm not so sure about the Oxy stuff. The pictures of what Chris Watts took while he missed the ultrasound that him and his wife had planned. We can see where his level of importance was with everything. It certainly was not focused on his wife or his missing children, <clears throat> even when all of that went down. So why would the ultrasound be any more important, right? All right, folks. Well, I don't know. Tell me your thoughts. Mentioned in the letters of the cattle uh, to cattle from her book. Well, that whole um, that whole book is really based off of a few visits that one woman took to talk to Chris Watts and and a letter that she had actually sent to him. Right? He supposedly responded to that letter, but. In my opinion, the only way to authenticate that is to have copies of the handwritten letter proof in his writing what he's saying and whatever. But even that doesn't decipher whether or not it's truthful. And we all know how much of a, of a pathological liar Chris Watts has been throughout this entire situation, throughout his marriage, throughout you know, the missing throughout the Amber Alert. He was very clueless and didn't seem to even really care about what the next biggest step was. He could barely care to go in for the ultrasound to to be celebratory of the the son that he he had made, you know. <clears throat> it's pretty unfortunate that this was sort of the last moments of, you know, Shanann's life. Unfortunate that she, you know, sort of fell victim to his heinous activities and behavior. I completely agree that a polygraph is necessary. However, it's only going to determine that Chris Watts is still a fucking liar. And I mean, what else? What else? We already know that, right? It would be nice to be able to have some specific questions that would be able to tell us if some of the things that he has said is a lie or truthful, that way we can X out all the shit that's bullshit that is a lie that, that we don't even need to hear, right? And I'm sure that a lot of this stuff still is. Will we ever get the full truth? I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Hello, Tambra. How are you, honey? Totally. We all know Chris Watts is a huge freaking liar. I mean, there's just no if, ands, or buts about it. Him and Nikki, you know, they're both freaking liars. So 
But if there's ever another polygraph, it would be nice to have that decipher the things that have been quoted and said from his lips to find out if that's actually a fact or not. And I mean, if he's lying, scratch, scratch, scratch. When are we going to get the truth here? But with the case closed, really all we're dealing with is his consciousness. And he clearly doesn't have much of a conscience to have done all of this stuff and then gone on to cook chicken breasts on the barbecue. Because, like, who knows what he did with those girls and when exactly everything happened, right? <clears throat> But his little message of I'm having a hard time trying to remember how to eat and stuff like that to his buddy. Uh, yeah, I highly fucking doubt that. Well, I don't know about once a liar, always a liar, because I've had I've had lies in my past. You know, I think that you are supposed to learn from your mistakes and realize that the lie doesn't get you any further ahead and it might be years down the line before he realizes that he really does need to clear his conscience he's not able to sleep anymore he's not able to do whatever anymore i mean eventually this will catch up to him psychologically as well i believe but it probably won't be for a long freaking time you guys I don't always think, yeah, like I'm with you on that, Tambra. I don't think that once a liar is necessarily always a liar. I, like I said, I I learned though, being a liar in in my in my younger years, what that got me and how much further that it got me, which was not further ahead, and how much more difficult it was to juggle all those lies, remember them, and keep up with them was also a huge task that I've turned out to, to sort of change a, a, a page to the book kind of thing. And I became so fucking truthful about everything that I'm even able to self-admit when I've been a piece of shit myself, when I have been a failure, when I have been a horrible person, but I have a conscience. You know what I mean? I don't know about Chris Watts and the way that he was able to do this methodically and, and try to get away with it just tells me he's completely not all there because the fact that he didn't realize there was even going to be consequences to what he was doing is just, it just blows my mind, you know, that he actually would think that he could go on and be with Nicole Kessinger after all of, all of this is just mine. It's a mind fuck. Like I, I can't do it. Yeah, the the lie thing. If you are, if you start living that kind of a life, it's more of a chore to have to keep up with all that and remember it all about who you told what to and all of that shit than it is to just be upfront and honest about whether or not you've been a piece of shit or a liar or not, right? And if you can lay your cards on the table, I think in, in my opinion, you are much better off and further ahead of the game than if you try to keep up with lies and build lies upon lies. Eventually, that will catch up to you, to every one of the per people who are living a life like that. I strongly believe that. <clears throat> there were two people in the hot Watts home on the 13th. Absolutely, YouTube monitors. Completely, 100%. But I think that he he thinks that he can still get away with webbing these lies and stuff. And like, I, you know, eventually, like I said, I feel like it's going to catch up to him and he's not going to be able to live with himself. And eventually, you know, with all his spirituality that he's come to, you know, come to know and whatever and grow in. I strongly believe that if he's lying about anything in this story, which I think he's lying about a lot of it. He's going to eventually get that, that feeling of consciousness that he needs to clear it. He needs to be upfront and honest and, and just and get the real deal off his chest or he's never going to be able to get over it. So I think right now is the game part where he thinks that, yeah, he's being honest about this or that. And there is some truth or honesty to little tidbits and details here and there. But it isn't the full truth and nothing but the truth. I mean, I think we're going to be floored once we actually get that. 
Oh, I definitely think that his story is BS. Yeah, I think he will break one day. This is going to catch up to him. It just is probably going to take a hell of a long time. Look at how long he stuck it out in his eight-year relationship before breaking. So who knows? It might be close to a decade before we get the full final truth of what fully actually really happened. But who knows? This is just me premonitioning whether or not this, you know, because I don't, I don't believe what's coming out of his mouth. I really don't. With this, with the footage of Nate's camera that shows specifically two different height of people, two different leg lengths of jeans, you know, a couple of different pairs of shoes, uh, the ponytail, the hoodie versus the 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 sweater, the long sleeve t-shirt, right? I mean, there was just completely different um, people coming out on those cameras, you know, and it had to have been triggered, you know, a few times before we got the actual recordings. And I'm sure that there's a lot of pieces in this case we still don't even have, you guys. So, and I, I have said this in a, in a mini conversation with another viewer of mine in regards to the missing pieces, you guys. If the authorities would have divulged to the public that Christopher Watts was in fact pre premeditatedly planning to kill his family, it would have probably made it look more so like someone else absolutely fucking knew about it and it was probably the person he was spending 99% of his time with. Not going to mention any names, but you know who I'm talking about. So, I mean, I think that it, with them having released absolutely every single detail, it would have showed that he had some planning to this, which would have probably made them have to be forced to put the death penalty on the table, which would have dragged this case out for years, which is not what the victim's family wanted at all. So I believe now that the information that is kind of incriminating in that way was withheld along with some other things because there's bits and pieces and in interviews that even y'all have mentioned. Hey, where where is Jim's interview? Did we ever hear from, you know, what he said or did, right? So there's a lot more to this than we're probably, you know, going to get in the next while. So <clears throat> I think Watts murdered before. You're very entitled to your opinion and to share it here, Mr. And Mrs. YouTube monitors. And thank you for sharing it. It's very possible, but I mean, you know, even as a, a youth, though, we wouldn't have had access to any of those records. We don't know his past. We know that he didn't have an adult criminal record, but... There's also unsolved crimes, I'm sure, all around that area. So, I mean, you know, who knows, right? Now that they do have, excuse me, his prints and his DNA and all of that, who knows if there's going to be more information that comes out in the future about, about that, right? The initial investigation was closed way too soon, Tambra, way too soon. They hadn't even finished the forensic testing and it was already done, shut, sentence closed, everything halted. There was, wasn't even any completion of analysis because of how fast that, that opened and, and closed. Quite shocking, you know, <clears throat> and we still have a lot more to talk about, folks. We've got a lot more of the case files to go through and we're, we'll be back here again next week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central Time to keep going with our Wicked Watts Wednesday theme. And then we'll be back face to face Sunday at 1 p.m. But definitely, uh, definitely a lot more interesting conversations. <coughs> It is hard to believe that Shanann wouldn't fight back. That's very true. And I, I, you know, I cannot wait to hear more of your thoughts on the books and the letters and the authenticity of all of it. Um, again, I kind of think we're down to one-sided stories, you know. Um, we're getting a one-sided event to 
to, uh, you know, an, an, an interview kind of thing. We've got her take on it. We don't really have his. We might have some words about what happened with the whole crime, but we don't really have the truth and all of it, right? So... <clears throat> To say how many times that she went into the Watts house for a reason. She would probably never know what that reason was, but I'm sure police are covering their bases. Oh, I'm sure, Inspired Dreamer, that you're onto something with that. They definitely have to be careful legally. I think that's why they couldn't ask too many, you know, incriminating type questions in her interview with Dwayne Kessinger. And that was a very, very uh, controlled interview on Dwayne Kessinger's part, despite there being very little um, physical spoken words that he was in control of that conversation. It was very noticeable with the two comments that were made from Dwayne in that interview to the officer giving that interview that he was in charge of it, not the officer. And for what reason, who knows, folks? I definitely think there would have been some twists that would have been put in and, and things like that. Same type of thing that, that I believe happened with some of the uh, daytime talk shows that, you know, some negative influence type wow and shock factor, uh, you know, things were basically said that, that didn't, you know, didn't exist. If you were somebody who had read the disclosure document and all the evidence, it, it would have verified that, you know? So it's unfortunate that some people feel the need to do that when, in all honesty, when these cases are a real deal, they all, they're already shocking enough. I don't think there needs to be lies and twists and whatever on it, but we will definitely be continuing this conversation uh, next week on Wednesday, folks. If you're enjoying it, smash that like button. I seriously appreciate the support. And I couldn't do this without you guys. Your commentary, our interactions together, and the way we are all cordial with one another, despite agreeing or disagreeing or bringing in a new concept or theory or per per perhaps conspiracy, whatever it may be, everybody's welcome to express themselves here. So I really appreciate the thumbs up. It's an awesome form of support. So <clears throat> um, Christine Carr, if you wanted to do um, some research on that and have some information for us on Wednesday about it, I would love to talk more about it. I would even look up the exact info you found and, and talk about it with you guys. So much love to you guys. It's as usual, T-G-I-S, thank goodness it's Sherry. And that's my corny little saying for my channel. <laughs> if you're new here and you enjoy hanging out, hit that subscribe button. If you're someone who wants to be notified whenever I do a post or I'm live or I put up a new video, please definitely hit uh, the notification bell. Make sure you select the all option so that you don't miss a thing. We will definitely see each other face to face Sunday, 1 p.m. Folks, I cannot wait. Um, we'll definitely uh, have a great rest of the week. Lots of new opportunities. Keep your heads held high. Know your worth and uh, don't let anybody trample all over you, right? <clears throat> I can't wait to continue this conversation about more of these interesting factors. Maria Kitty Cat, make sure to bring this up next week, folks. Sorry for the technical interruption. I will try to edit these together and put it into one, but uh, who knows? <laughs> I don't know how skillful I am in that area. We shall see, all right? <laughs> Much love to you guys, and we'll see you guys again on Sunday. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Stay tuned for another true story with me, Sherry Weens. Bye for now, folks. Much love.